Hey guys, this is Sam, and it's been a while since I've talked about my home screen setup or my iPhone layout. And since I did my What's on my iPhone series a few months back, I've switched phones and completely redone my home screen, so I think it's time for an update video. My philosophy before this revamp or redesign of my personal home screen was that I wanted my phone to look as stock as possible, and looking back at it is very naive because some apps that I never even used, like weather or videos or the iTunes store, just took up room on my home screen where I could be using my third party apps instead. My old iPhone the home screen would look very similar to this with a few of my apps on the bottom row or row and a half, and then I would always swipe over to get to my most used apps, which was really backwards, so I redid it, and this is my new setup. Now the top is where I'm going to start even though it's a terrible place to, just because that is how your iPhone will look that very first row at the top of my screen when it comes out of the box. But it is phone, calendar, photos, and camera. All of those apps are stock, and they haven't failed me yet, so I keep on using them. Starting off on the second row is the clock application, and while I rarely open it, if I need to set an alarm, I think it deserves a spot on the home screen just because usually it's gonna be late at night, and I don't wanna go throughout my entire home screen setup to find it, so it's just easily located right there. I know the Maps app is questionable for a lot of people because back in the days of iOS 6 when the icon actually told you to drive left onto the highway when you were in the middle of a bridge was kind of crazy and I think it failed me once back then but in iOS 7 and 8 and 9 it's been fantastic and the iOS 10 version looks amazing as well. I like hearing Siri navigate me, Google Maps sounds a little, actually not a little, very superficial and kind of sketchy even though the navigation itself is probably more accurate. So I prefer stock on the Maps app. News I always use to catch up on the latest, whether it's good or bad. The interface is pretty nice and the ads are very unobtrusive if there are any. So I really enjoy reading my news in that application. Now the Reminders app I actually hate. And you're probably wondering then why is it on your home screen or on your phone in the first place? Well, when it's 11 p.m. at night or 12 or one in the morning and I randomly awake in panic because I know I'm gonna forget to do something very important the following day, Instead of trying to blindly type a text that's not going to make any sense or set an alarm to remind myself or write a note, I can hands-free with my eye closed, with my eyes closed, just say, hey Siri, remind me to do this tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then it's usually smart enough if I say tomorrow and it's after midnight of the next day, it'll be like, oh, do you want to do Monday, July 17th or Tuesday, July 18th? And I'm like, oh, tomorrow's, or today is already Monday, so I want to do it now. But it's very intelligent and while the app itself it's terribly designed in my opinion, Siri integration is killer and it's what I'll be using until that third party API is released with iOS 10. Now in the third row we have the Bank of America app, the very first of our third party apps on the home screen. I'm always using it to check my account balances and make sure nothing suspicious is happening or transfer money between accounts or whatever my banking needs might be. I use the activity app right here because I really like seeing how far I made it with my rings, how far my progress is, when my peak hours of activity were, and I find that stuff really interesting. And the tracking on the Apple Watch is really good. It's probably my favorite feature of the watch overall. Settings, you know, is always for changing, well, settings. And then the App Store, also very self-exclamatory for downloading apps. I'm always opening that up. Now moving on to the fourth row, I don't use the stock weather app. I'm a much bigger fan of this weather app called Dark Sky. It's got this ridiculous weather tracking data. I don't know where they get it from or how the app does it, but if it's about to rain, I'll actually, most of the time at least, get a notification on my phone saying, hey, watch out, it's about to rain lightly, or a huge thunderstorm is about to come through, and it saved me from becoming soaked once or twice. Now, it's not perfect, it's not always gonna give you a push notification, but most of the time, I've had a really positive experience with Dark Sky, and I use it any day over the stock weather app. Now, Snapchat, I use quite a bit to send snaps and view other people's Snapchat stories. YouTube, I am probably on more than I should be, just watching other content creators' videos. Clash Royale is my favorite game at the moment, even over Pokemon Go, if you can believe it or not. I just love the Supercell game concept. I played Clash of Clans for a little bit. Clash Royale is kind of similar in the tower defense aspect, but it's a fun game to play. I did a standalone review on it in the past, and I'm still playing it months after it's been released. On our fifth row is the YouTube Studio app. I'm always using it to track my analytics, see what videos work, which don't work. 
uh, how my ad revenue is doing, how my views are doing, engagement, so on and so forth. So I open that up multiple times a day just to see how my channel's doing. Instagram, I use to post photos on. Tweetbot is my favorite Twitter client out there. I am on Twitter, very similar to YouTube, much more than I probably should be, but I'm always catching up with news and reading what's happening with Apple and other companies. Tweetbot is my favorite way to browse Twitter, and I've been using it for years now. Overcast is my favorite podcast application. I don't listen to podcasts as much as I used to, but I still do quite a bit of podcast listening, and Overcast is my favorite way to do it. Now here in my doc, I've got the messages app for texting, which I do a lot, Safari for browsing the internet. Outlook is my default mail client, or not my default per se, but the mail client I use every single day. Just because it works really well, it's made by Microsoft, so it's constantly updated. It's got some really nice swipe gestures, and I switched to it after Mailbox got shut down a few months ago. And then the music app, of course, for listening to Apple Music and any of the other music that I have downloaded on my iPhone. If you guys enjoyed this somewhat lengthy or quick update video on my home screen, then leave a like down below. Let me know if you use any of the apps that I do or if you found this kind of thing interesting. Maybe I'll make some more of my other home screens or other pages in the future. I've been Sam. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys, and I'll talk to you later.